Welcome to our Missionary Stories for Children. Aren't you excited over this lesson about Hyatt? Doesn't it make you want to tell others about Christ? Well, this week we're going to ask you to do something this summer that you have probably haven't done before, is to use this New Testament that we're giving out. Now, if you want your neighborhood to be good, you need a New Testament like this to pass out to all of the children in the neighborhood. Let them read this New Testament. This is a picture of where I grew up in Kentucky. And you write to the post office box number on the screen and you will be able to get these. Now this is how we can reach this city for Christ. It has questions and answers in the front and the back. It has where to turn to for all the different things that you are going through, the trials and the tribulations. And it has marked where to turn to for you to know that you are a child of God. I want to ask you one of the most important questions you will ever answer. Are you 100% sure you will go to heaven when you die? And then it has all of these wonderful questions that you need and that I need, and it shows you where to turn to in the Bible that you will not be confused. And then, after you accept Christ as Savior, it has, as a child of God, live every day for the glory of God. So it has all of these things for you to do as a true believer. And then, you are to read the book of John through, which is only 21 chapters. And you can read a chapter a day. So then when you give these to the children, they can come to your house and ask you questions, and you can give them all of the answers from God's Word. This is the greatest tool the Lord has ever given to us, and we're thankful for those that are having the joy of passing these out every place in Cincinnati. And we're excited over that. And wherever this lesson is going forth in Kentucky or wherever, we're asking for every person to be a missionary this summer. If you're a child of God, you have been called to do something for the Lord. And you're going to see this in this lesson. Today we're going to be reading from John chapter 16, which John is my favorite book in the Bible. It's written to believers. That's why after you become a child of God, your teacher is the Holy Spirit and he teaches you all things. So we're going to be reading from chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truths. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and will show you things to come. Now you see, Jesus Christ came to make known and to manifest the Father. Jesus Christ died on the cross 50 days later, the Holy Spirit came to dwell in the lives of believers. And He will dwell with us forever and ever. He will never leave us nor forsake us. When we draw the last breath on this earth, we go to sleep on earth and wake up in heaven. There is no pain in death, only going through the gates of glory for a believer. But if you're not a believer, your suffering has just begun because you go to a place of torment, and that is eternal. Heaven's eternal, and so is hell. And then we read in chapter 16 of John, verse 27. 
For the Father himself loveth you because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. You have to believe that he has, has always been. He was in heaven before he came to the earth. Now listen at verse 28. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. And then it says in verse 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And then in John chapter 17, he says, And now, verse 5, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. He's always been, and he always will be. That's how you have eternal life, because he is eternal. And then we go to... to Verse 18, now listen, this is how you can know you're a child of God. If you can sin and enjoy it, you're not a child of God. But listen at this, for you as a believer, what he commands us to do. As thou hast sent me into the world, he's talking to his father, this is his high priestly prayer. Even so have I also sent them into the world. Neither pray I for them alone, but for those also which shall believe on me through their word. You see, he's praying for you today as I'm giving out this word for those that receive Christ. And then, of course, you read John 17. It's the most beautiful prayer, and it is for us believers. And then he says in verse 23, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast loved me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. He loves me the same as he does his son, because Jesus Christ's blood cleanses me from all sin. He can't look upon sin. And I am to be holy. And listen what he says. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given, with, given me be with me where I am, that they may, may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. What love. You see, that's why we're to sit down and to meditate and only see the manifestation of the glory and majesty of Christ. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the power that is in the blood. We thank Thee for Thy Word that we can worship Thee in spirit and in truth and worship Thee in the beauty of Thy holiness. Once again today, we pray for every person that's listening, that's having difficulties, having tribulation. And thy word says that we're not to faint in our tribulation for thee. If we suffer with thee, we shall also reign with thee. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. Thank thee for saving every person that's listening. May every person in this city come to know Thee as personal Savior through these lessons. And we pray for those like little Hyatt in Syria all around the world, that they may know the great love that Thou dost have for them, that they would not trust in a God that is dead, but the true and living God. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So as we come back to this lesson today, we saw last week how little Hyatt had been put in the basement. She was put there because she didn't know her Koran that she was supposed to memorize. And she thought about little Muna 
and she had heard the men, the authorities in the, in the village where they were, that they had said, we must do something with this man. He is trying to change all of the Muslims into Christians, and they don't believe like we do, so we must do something with this man. So this was the heartache for little Hyatt. She wanted to know Muna was her best friend, how she could get to her father and warn them that this was going to happen. So that's all she could think about. And while she's down there, she hears the children upstairs repeating all that they were to learn. Then she heard them leave and go out of the building, and she knew she was left alone. She had no idea how she was going to get out of that locked basement. And she was tired. She'd been down there for hours. And she was afraid of the rat. She kept her feet up as far as she could off of the dirt floor to keep the rat from biting her. It was dark down there. And all of a sudden, she heard everybody leave and it was quiet and then she heard someone come in. It was her mother. She came and she told her to come upstairs. The teacher unlocked the door. As they were on their way home, she said, Mother, how did you know where I was? She said, Muna asked the girls because she couldn't find you and she wanted to know where you were and they told her and she said, she came right over to my house and told me. Oh, she said, I have such a wonderful friend. She is my very best friend. Mother, can I go over to her house right now? No, you cannot go to her house. You must go home and study your Quran. You cannot leave the house. She got home and she couldn't even study. All she could think about was what were they going to do? All of a sudden, she heard the fire trucks, and someone yelled, fire! And she looked out. Her father and her brother, Nader, ran to where the fire was. The print shop was on fire. Then she ran as fast as she could to tell Muna that the print shop was on fire and their house was going to be next. And she saw, but my father and, and my brother is at the print shop, and my mother and the baby is here. She said, you must leave. Oh, she said, Muna, you must leave. You must go because they're going to get the house next. She said, will you run and tell my father at the print shop so he will know? She ran to the print shop, and there was so much confusion. Her father didn't see. Her brother didn't know that she had gone to Muna's house. God was protecting her from the awful, awful sin of what would happen to her if she had told them, if they knew she had told them. So when she told Muna's father, he wasn't going to listen at first, and then he saw the scared look. She said, they're going to get your house next. I've already warned Muna and her mother and they're getting ready to leave. They had to leave town. They left the house with nothing but what they could carry away. After the fire was burned at the print shop, he said, we must go to that infidel's house and burn his house down. And he said, how many are going to go with me? All of these people in the village went with him. They got to the house, and when they got there, they were all gone. He was so angry, someone must have warned him. He knocked on the door, and no one answered. He even went in because the door was unlocked, and yelling to him, You infidel, what are you doing trying to change us Muslims into Christians? came out and he said, we will not burn his house down. We know now that they are gone and they can't cause any more trouble. Hyatt thought her heart would break. 
she said, it's all because I dropped the track that she gave me telling me how to get to heaven. Muna was her best friend. She was sick. She said, oh, I will never see her again. They will be afraid to come back. After a while, her uncle built the print shop back again. No one paid any attention to him because he did not print Christian material. So one day, she came in the house and her mother was crying. And she didn't know why her mother was crying. And she said to her, Mother, what is wrong? She said, Your father has married another woman. And she is coming here to live. Oh, Mother, I don't want that to happen. I want everything to be as they are. She said, But the Muslim law says that you can have as many as four wives if you can keep them up. And your father has been making a lot of money at the coppersmith shop, so he can afford another wife. This wife was very young and beautiful. She hated Hyatt. She hated Hyatt's mother, and she told them what to do all the time. And she said, Hyatt, from now on, you will not be allowed to take your father his lunch. I will do that from now on. So Nader and his father were closer than before. Hyatt and her mother were closer. Hyatt's mother was tired all the time because she had to do all the work. She hated his new wife and she hated Nader. Nothing seemed to be going right for Hyatt. One day her father came in and he heard him tell the young wife that Muna's father was coming back because her uncle had died and he's coming back to the print shop. When she heard this, she was so overjoyed. She wanted to just yell and tell them how happy she was, but she was afraid because she knew what they thought about Muna and she knew that she could not be with her if they knew it. So when she came back, she got to meet her. And when she did, it was so exciting because this time she came back and she had given her, she had her little purse in her hand and she told her what her father had been doing. She said, but Muna, you don't know. Can you ever forgive me? Forgive you for what? Forgive me for being the cause of the print shop being burned. You see, I had the track in my prayer rug and Nader found it and took it to my father. And she said, oh, oh, I can forgive you because guess what? She said, it was the best thing ever happened for us because when we went to this new city, we found a Christian printer and we have printed more tracks up than we could ever have here. And she knew the Bible verse because all of her family were Christians and they all get along better now than ever before. And she could see a difference in them than her family. And she said, I am going to give you another track. She said, you know I can forgive you because all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. And this was the best for us. But she told her about her mother's 
young wife, how her mother was tired all the time, and how difficult it was to live in this house. She said, if you will receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, He will take that hate from you. <gasps> she couldn't understand. She said, because after you become a child of God, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You will not hate your brother anymore because God's word teaches us that we're to love one another as he has loved us. And look what he says in his word. Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That's what God will do if you turn to him. She couldn't understand this at all. So as she was leaving, she was going, she put her little track in her purse first. And then she got it out. She couldn't wait because now she can read. Before she couldn't read. And she was saving this to when she could read after she started to school. Now Nader is in school and she's 10 years old. She can read. She started to read it. Nader followed her once again. What are you reading? Give me that. She put it in her purse. He snatched her purse from her and ran to tell her father. Her father came home. When he came home, he grabbed her and was ready to hit her. Just as he was ready, there was an earthquake. The earth started shaking, the house started shaking. His arm couldn't move and hit her. You know, that's how we're to pray for anyone that would hurt a little child, that God would paralyze them or blind them so they couldn't hurt a child. Because God's word is so plain on what happens to anyone that will hurt a child. As you turn to Matthew 18, I want you to just think about what God's word says about anyone that hurts a little child. He says, wherefore, he says, whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. Her father didn't hit her. They went outside and they looked. The top of the mosque had fallen. They went to all the neighbors to see how much damage was done. When they got there, the sheik that was in charge of this building, he was lying there, couldn't move, and Muno's father had a sister that was there. They came running to see, she was a nurse. They came running to see if they could help any that were sick, that had been hurt. When she saw how bad the sheik was, she said, he, Muna's father said to Hyde's dad, now they're having to talk. You know, once you hate someone, God just brings them right into your life. It is so wonderful. And now he could help. He said, let us take the sheik to our home 
and my sister can care for him because she's a nurse. He cannot go to your house. He cannot go to your home. She said, I can care for him better there, and you can come and visit to see what is happening to him. Because right then, he didn't know anything. He had been hurt so bad. He didn't know where he was or what he was doing. And she said, I know that I can help. And Muna's father and sister talked him in to letting the sheik go to this Christian. Now, I want to ask all of you that are listening, is this kind of religion, it's a religion because anything that is false is religion and not Christ. Is, does this kind of religion teach us what we have just learned? To hate one another, to burn down another's building, to not allow anyone to be with another Christian that is in Christ, that has been cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. They are children of God. And we just read what happens to those. What is better for them if they hurt a little child? Now, do you think that this is what is pleasing to the Lord? Let's ask ourselves, what are we learning through this? Are we learning that Christ is love? Are we learning that we are to love one another as he has loved us? And we turn to 1 John. Now, as we teach these lessons, you must understand there is an application for us. There is always a lesson for us to learn from these stories. One of them, it says, I write unto you, I, to you fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children, because you've known the father. And he says in chapter four of 1 John, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Do you love your brethren? Do you love those that are lost? Are you going to tell them about Christ this summer? The little This is tragic that anyone has to be in fear of any religion and not know the love of Christ. Tell the world that Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way, the Lord is soon returning.